this morning like you really do love it, amen, on the first, nice and loud, church. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and His glory, of Jesus and His love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies. know the one that's the one of the story Amen. do we know the one of the story Amen. do we know that he's coming back Amen. you know that you're saved Amen. why in the world are we so quiet don't know what's that <laughs> one honest missionary amen all right <laughs> but seriously folks look uh, I'm not saying that we have to, well, it wouldn't, wouldn't hurt for us to run around a little bit, amen, shout a little bit. Yeah. But I will tell you this, uh, we ought to not be quiet about the Lord. I mean, just kind of. Amen. Mm, that's right. You know why we act like that? Because the world beats us down all week. Guess what? We're not in the world today. That's we're in the right. church. Yeah. We got the Holy Spirit here with us. 
We ought to just be able to just relax and shout and have a good time and sing, sing at the top of your lungs. You say, I won't sound good. Don't worry, your mask, we can't hear you. Uh, but, uh, you know, let the mask be a filter, all right? But uh, uh, just sing, sing out, sing the praises of Zion, shout, praise God, have a good time, relax. You're with God's people today. Amen. You're with your church family today. Amen. Hey, man, there's no reason why. Look, um, anybody here have quiet family gatherings? Nope. Anybody here have quiet family gatherings? Uh, you know I'm a Schumacher, right? Uh, we're not exactly known for being quiet, right? Boy, our family gets together. At times we've had folks coming down, and we're just all talking at the same time, and Somehow we know what everybody else is saying, and we just have a good time. It's noisy, it's loud, it's a good time. It's a good time, right? Yeah. You're with your church family this morning. We don't have to be so quiet and dead and, uh, and, and quit acting like it's because you're being sanctimonious, all right? Uh, it, let's, let's praise the Lord. I know it's a little bit gray out there, but we have the S-O-N in here. Amen. We have the S O N with us in here. Amen. We have the S O N in here. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, help us. Help us this morning to just praise you and thank you and, and just uh, lift you up and honor you and have a good time praising the Lord and, and singing and fellowshipping. And, and Lord, we, we have the victory. We have the victor on our side. And I'm just grateful. Grateful to be here this morning. Thank you for everyone that's come. Pray for those that are sick. And I pray you just bless in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You all may be seated. So let's have a good time as a family this morning. Amen? amen. amen. Let's praise the Lord together. Amen? amen? Let's do it every once in a while without the pastor having to prop you. Amen? amen. All right. Amen. Let's have a good time this morning. I just, you know, we've been, the singing's been good the last few weeks. I know the weather changed a little bit and all that stuff, but... It just seen this morning, we were a little too quiet. See, we were a little too quiet. All right, amen. Uh, let's have a good time. Seriously, it, it's, it's, this, is, this ought to be the best time of the week for a Christian. I mean, really, shouldn't this be the best time of the week? We're in church together with God's people. Amen? amen. Good to see the teenagers here. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're glad to see you all. Right. Things happen, Amen. But uh, glad to see the teenagers. Glad to see everybody here, and uh, good to have that. Excited about what the Lord's doing. Two weeks, two weeks from today begins missions conference. I have Brother Mike Cox coming to do the preaching, and several missionaries coming in. Missionary to Scotland, uh, missionary to um, French Guyana, uh, missionary to Colombia. Several missionaries coming in, still confirming one, um, but uh, having a good, going to have a great time in the Lord. Go Sunday through Wednesday, the second through the fifth of May, and we're going to be just having a, a blast here and uh, looking forward to what the Lord's going to do. With that, we're working on details of all the things that need to be done. I'll be talking more uh, 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 later with the ladies about uh, meals and things like that. How we're going to do it? Got to be done a little bit different this year. Uh, but we still got to feed them. Hey, Amen. Amen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, missionary wasn't quiet on that. Amen. <laughs> but uh, uh, but we gotta we gotta take care of them and all that stuff. And it's gonna be a good time. Uh, it's a, it's amazing when you only when you have a conference once a year and you have to cancel one. It's been two years, and uh, I missed it. I missed it last year. I, it was hard for me to tell the missionaries we just can't have it this year. Because we were right at the beginning of everything, and it was just, uh, we didn't know what was going on. I mean, they had just reopened churches, I think, or were, I don't even know, or was going to be that week. I forget what it was, but it was, uh, it was something. But uh, well, praise the Lord, we can do it this year. Amen. And uh, looking forward to what the Lord's going to do. And I hope that you've already cleared your calendar as best as you can for those days so that you can be here every single service. And uh, Brother Mike will be with us. Uh, all, you know, uh, the whole conference, he'll be preaching and teaching Sunday school. And then we'll be having missions presentations and testimonies and stuff going on through the week. And it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time. You've never been to a missions conference. You ought to make the effort to come every service because it is a blessing. Amen. And here's how revivals, camp meetings, missions conferences work. Everything builds on itself. So, you know, if you only come to one service, 
you'll get something. But if you come to every service, it just seems to build on itself. It just seems to build as the week goes on. And, uh, and look, once again, uh, the technology is great uh, for those that are not able to come, but it is not the same. And anyone here will tell me, we got folks right now that are uh, facing things that they just want to be back in church, and they said it's, it's nice, but it's not the same. It's not the same. That's right. uh, it's just the, the movement is not the same. Things are not the same. And so you want to be here in services, in services for that, for the missions conference. And parents, you ought to get your kids here. Maybe the Lord will call them the mission field. Amen. And right now they're going to shake their head, but God has a way of changing their minds. That's right. God has a way. Get them here. Get them under the preaching. Get them under the teaching. And just see what the Lord does. And uh, we've had kids in the past that faithfully, faithfully gave every week. Gave the mission. Faithfully. Faithfully. God can use even the littlest ones and all through the teenage years. And God can, the sooner you get them involved, the easier it'll be when they're an adult. You know, it's easier to do things when you're an adult when you started as a kid That's right. than when you have to start as an adult. And so get them here, get them in church. Let's have a great time. Let's, let's just listen to what God has to say. That's the 2nd through the 5th of May. The 2nd through the 5th of May, and I'm excited about what the Lord is doing and how he's putting it all together, um, and I'm looking forward to uh, the missions conference. I hope you'll be here every single service. With that, we've got some things we need to do uh, to get things ready, to get things organized, and so the next couple of weeks, we'll be having a couple of work days uh, to get some things cleaned, scoured, things have been sitting for a year, that need to be washed and cleaned and scrubbed and and um, I'd rather you did it than I did it. Uh, but um, we got some things we need to do. We want to have the you know the building spick and span and clean and everything ready to go for the missions conference. And so we I will send out a text later to the to the church. You know I always send it out to that church. Everybody in the church. I'll be sending out when we're going to be uh, meeting. My wife will be getting together with some of the ladies to. Uh, uh, we'll give you a day and a time, and if you're able to help, it would be a blessing. A blessing. We understand some may not be able to because of work and different things, but if you're able to help, uh, we need to get the, the fellowship hall cleaned up. We need to get the, uh, get some good deep cleaning done. We need to get the missions apartment ready um, and get things um, spick and span. Amen? Amen. Um, and so if you can help with that... Um, Especially ladies, if you can help with that, but uh, uh, that would be a blessing. We'll let you know. We'll send out a, a message to everybody. And uh, all I would ask is that if you can help, that you let us know so we kind of know how many people are going to be coming to help. All right? And that'll be the next couple of weeks. We'll probably have a couple of different days when we do some cleaning. Uh, we'll need to, towards the end of not this coming week, but the, the week after that, we'll need to do some decorating for the missions conference, different things that we're going to do. And we could use help doing that. We'll let you know when we're going to do it, all right? We'll let you know, and then you can help us out um, with those things. Amen. Excited about the missions conference. Amen? Amen. Anyone else excited that we get to have it again this year? Amen. Boy, we, this church, I think, I don't know when they started missions conferences, but it was way back probably in the 60s, brothers, I would, I would think. Pretty much... As long as your mom was here and Brother Jess were here, they pretty much have had them. Last year might have been the first one that they've never had. In the year, we've never been able to have one. I don't know. And, uh, and so we're excited about it. Always enjoy Missions Conference. If you've never been, come. If you've been before, come again. Amen? Because you're going to have a great time, and it's going to be exciting, and we're looking forward to it. And the good thing is, is Brother Mike gets to bring his wife this year. Amen? So Sister Brenda will be here. And that's always a, a blessing. She's a, she's a blessing. She's a real blessing. Amen, brother. We need to do some more singing. As you stay seated, turn to hymn number 22 this morning. Hymn number 22. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Yeah. Sing it out, folks. Come on now. Sing it out, church. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine.
Assurance, let's all rise. <laughs> let's sing hymn number 144. Hymn number 144. Oh, what a day, what a day that will be, church. Sing it out this morning. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears.
ought to not be quiet about theirs either. Amen. Amen. Somebody walks in here, they ought to know that you're in agreement with what's going on Amen. and you're excited with what's going on Amen. and you're a part of it. Amen. You know what Christianity has a lot of? Observers. Yeah. A lot of people just observing. You know what we need is participants. Amen. You may not be able to be up here preaching, but you can participate in the amen. You can participate in the encouragement. You can participate. You can be in the service. Amen. 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 Don't have to be dead. We're Baptist. We only have the reputation of being dead. We don't have to be dead. Amen. All right? We can be like those old-fashioned shouting Baptists. Amen? Amen. 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 John chapter number four. Amen? Amen. <laughs> John chapter 4. Uh, I'm having a good time. Y'all may not be, but I'm having a good time. 
Y'all might be getting annoyed with me, but I'm having a good time. Amen? 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 Amen. Amen. Teenagers? Amen. Teenagers? Amen. Teenagers? All right. We'll keep working at it. Amen? Still alive. <laughs> I don't have any candy up here. I go, Amen. I say, hey, jumping over the pew right there. What's your favorite kind? Kit Kats. You have any Kit Kats? Would you jump over the pew and say Amen for a Kit Kat? John chapter four, Amen. I'm having fun. I haven't been able to see y'all very much. I got to get all my picking on you out. Amen. All right. John chapter four. No, it really is. I've enjoyed having the teenagers here and enjoying that. And John chapter four, John chapter four. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. By the way, let me stop there for a minute. Isn't that just like Christianity? Religion, always comparing this over that, and that one over this, and this over that. Uh, there's a reason the Lord says not to compare ourselves amongst ourselves. Uh, that's how we like to do, though. We always like to, oh, that one's, that one's better, that one's bigger, that one's this, that one's that. Um, the Lord Jesus and John the Baptist were not in competition with each other. They were on the same team doing the same thing. John the Baptist was the forerunner preaching about the Lord Jesus Christ. And as soon as Jesus came, he recognized him as the Lamb of God, sent disciples to him. And yet the religious people had this competition going on. You do realize we're not in competition with others that are preaching the truth, right? right. Amen. You do realize we're not in competition with others who are, who are doing, uh, there, there's no place in Christianity for jealousy. Right. No place in Christianity for, for uh, superiority. We're all working on the same team for the same goal. Amen. And that is to bring people to Jesus Christ, then bring them into the church, baptize them, and make disciples out of them. Amen. We're all on the same team about this. And, uh, and so, but uh, uh, verse number three, it says, He left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. Give me to drink. And so, um, and then let's jump over, if you would, to verse number uh, um, 28, it says, The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore saith the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are there yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and one reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that I ever did. Uh, as we've been talking over the last number of weeks, we've been talking about growth and Christian growth and how you need to, um, uh, how important the word of God is in Christian growth. How important it is to be born again. That, that is the beginning step. That's the beginning step. You can't grow if you haven't been born. Right. So you have to be born again. And then you need to get your security settled. You need to get it settled that you are saved and that you know the Lord Jesus and are secure in your salvation. You have to have those things settled. 
Folks that are constantly battling their security of salvation, they almost spin their wheels because they can't get past that. They can't get past that. They just keep dealing with that. God wants you to know that you're saved. Amen. These things have I written unto you that you may know that you have eternal life. Amen. So we need to be secure. We need to be settled. We need to be in. And then we talked last week about how if you're going to grow, uh, you need the word of God. You need to be saved. You need to have security and you need the church. You need the church. This is the place, the pillar and ground of the truth. This is where uh, uh, you are going to, uh, you need to read your Bible every day. But at church is where you have it explained and taught and, and you can grow in the Lord through going to church. The Bible says, not forsaking the assembling yourselves together as a manner of some is so much the more as you see the day approaching. As we see the day of the Lord coming, as we see his return getting closer, we need to be more in church, not less. Amen. And yet, how many churches are canceling services? There are some churches only have one service a week. One. Many of them have quit having Sunday school they have one service in the morning. Uh, they've canceled Sunday night service. They have small groups on Wednesday. And so really you're under the preaching of the word in a church once a week. You need more than that. Amen. You need more than that. What did he tell Timothy as the, as the, as, 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 he gave him the list of all the things that were going to happen in the last days. And then he tells him, preach the word. You need the preaching. You need the teaching of the word of God. You need the church to grow. But as you grow, part of your growth is you need to learn to tell others about Christ. A Christian that is growing is someone that's going to be obedient to Christ. And you need to learn how to tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't worry, in the future, we'll talk about baptism. That's important. And we'll talk about that. But what's interesting in this story, before she was ever baptized, you know what she started doing? Telling others about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You ought to be, I mean, as soon as you come to know Christ, you should start telling others about Christ. You may not have all the terminology down. You may not know all the verses. But you can sure go run like this lady and say, come see he who showed me all things I'd ever done. Amen. As you are growing, you need to catch the vision of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you need to catch the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you need to get... Uh, the mission of the Lord Jesus Christ settled in your heart. And the Lord Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. When he called his disciples, he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. The whole purpose of him calling them was so that they could learn to fish for other people. He took them away from fishing for fish to fish for men. And here we see the Lord Jesus Christ. And we see him with this ministry that he has given to us, this ministry of reconciliation. And we see him here as he goes through Samaria. And I've always loved that verse in verse number um, um, four where it says, and he must needs go through Samaria. There were other ways to travel around Samaria. There were. They were longer. They were more tedious. They were the routes that were mainly taken by the Jews because the Jews didn't like the Samaritans. But the Lord Jesus needed to go through Samaria. I don't believe for one moment that he just happened to sit on that well. I believe he had a divine appointment with that, that lady. I believe he went through Samaria to preach to the Samaritans. I believe he went through Samaria because he knew that he was going to lead that lady to the Lord and she was going to go. She's the one that brought everybody to him. He didn't even have to go get a crowd. Didn't have to put up an announcement. Didn't have to have a Facebook post. Didn't have to have anything. He led her to the Lord and she went and got them all and brought them back. 
And so we see here in this story, in John chapter number four, that the Lord Jesus needed to go through Samaria. But when he went through Samaria, he was going to do the work of his father. And he was going to eat meat that the disciples did not know of. His purpose that day was not to conduct business. His purpose that day was to bring people to himself. And we see here in chapter number four that he goes in verse six. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey sat thus on the well and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. And uh, I've, I've preached this passage many times and there's a lot that you can get into with the discussion that the Lord Jesus has with this lady. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the whole discussion, but suffice it to say that the Lord Jesus Christ was there asking her for a drink of water, but he was there to offer her living water. The purpose of that visit at that well, the purpose there was for him to be able to offer her living water. He wanted her to know him as her savior. He wanted her to recognize him as the Messiah. He cut through the religion. He cut through her excuses. He cut through all of that to get to the point, I can offer you living water because that was his purpose for being there that day. That's right. He was weary. See, why did he ask for a drink of water? Well, in the flesh, he was thirsty. But I also believe he, it was an icebreaker. Men and women back then didn't talk, especially when it was, when it, when it was a Jew and a Samaritan, especially when they were alone there. That wasn't supposed to be. Just a man and a woman there alone. There was a lot of things there. She came up. She saw him. She wasn't going to talk to him. But the Lord Jesus was going to get her attention. And he got her attention. And he got her attention. And he offered her living water. And he showed her her sin. And he cut through her religion to get to the place where it says there's coming a day when you're going to need to worship in spirit and in truth. Wanted to get her over her religion. Wanted to point out her sin. Offer her the living water. And guess what? The lady came to know Christ. Amen. That was his purpose. That's right. The Lord Jesus came to heal sinners. I am come to seek and to save that which was lost. He did many other things. He healed the blind. He raised the, the, the cripple. He touched the leper. He made the deaf to hear. He did a whole lot of other things. He spent time in people's homes, but everywhere he went, his purpose was to show himself to them and to give them an opportunity to drink of the living water. Everything he did was to bring people to him so they could know him. By the way, what good would it have done to have touched someone's eyes and opened them physically and not given them an opportunity to have their eyes open spiritually. And so we see here that the Lord Jesus must needs go through Samaria. Why? There was a lady there that needed to be saved. Why? There was some other people there that needed to be saved. There was going to be a great movement of God in that city right there because of him going and sitting on the well and talking to that woman and offering her the living water and revealing her sin to her so that she would turn to him as the savior. She left the water pot. She was no longer interested in physical water. She had spiritual water. She went to fill the water pots, right? Says so she left them and took off to tell the man of the city. You say, why'd she go to the men? Well, the uh, Bible doesn't specifically say this, but but inferring from her situation, the ladies didn't want anything to do with her. So she went back to those men who she'd been hanging around and running around with, brought them out. I'll tell you this, many people believe because of a woman who got saved. And do you see the pattern though? The Lord Jesus Christ, his whole purpose was to bring that lady to him. And then when she got saved and she found the Messiah, the Savior, what did she do? She immediately went and told somebody else. 
She immediately went and told somebody else. And I'll tell you this right now. Uh, I'm as guilty as anyone of not witnessing the way I should, of not taking the time I should, of not, uh, not, not doing what I should. But I'll tell you this, we need to get back to the place where our salvation is so exciting, we just want everybody else to know about it. Is your salvation still exciting? You still remember what it was like before? I've always said my life is in two parts, before and after. It's a different life that I've had since I got saved. My life was before and after. Do you remember what your life was before? Do you remember what the Lord Jesus Christ saved you from? And some of you are sitting here and you're church kids and, and uh, you know, your parents don't let you go out. And you haven't gotten into some of the sin of the other folks in this building got into. But there's people in here can tell you about sin they got into and how it wrecked them and it hurt them and it affected them. But God saved them. And you kids that have grown up in homes that don't allow you to get into all that stuff, don't ever think that you're too good. Because you may not be doing it on the outside, but you probably got a heart that's dirty on the inside. Right. See, that was my issue. I wasn't allowed to do all the stuff. I, wasn't, I couldn't get away with it. I couldn't go out and I couldn't carouse and I couldn't party, but I sure wanted to. I sure had a heart that thought wicked thoughts and, and, and I had a heart that was dirty and rotten with anger and bitterness and, and dirty thoughts and all kinds of things. I don't care if you, are, you went out and lived the worst life that's possible or if you've grown up in church your whole life, you need to recognize you're as dirty as this woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when you get saved, don't ever forget your Savior saved you from the pig pen. Yeah, your Savior saved you from the pit. Your Savior saved you from the filth. And when you remember that, I'm not talking about dredging up the past. I'm not talking about living in all of that. I'm not. No, I'm talking about remembering where he brought you from so that you can thank your Savior from where he's brought you from and that you will keep it fresh in your mind. My salvation is amazing. And I want everybody to know about it. Amen. Anybody here remember the day you got saved? Amen. You remember what it felt like? Amen. You remember what it was? Do you remember the burden that was lifted off your shoulders? Amen. You remember the, the amazing, do you remember the first time you had that amazing thought, all my sins are gone? Do you remember when you were able to, to just remember, I used to be so wicked and yet my Savior saved me? When it became real that Jesus died for me, he gave his blood to wash away my sin. Do you remember the first time that you really, really knew the love of God? When you really understood God loves God me we need to remember those things why because we need to be able to go tell somebody come and see a man who showed me all things i ever did come see the man come see the lord jesus oh how we need to keep fresh in our mind our savior saved us from so much and I am so glad I'm saved and I want everybody else to be saved too. Do you want everybody else to be saved too? Amen. Amen. Do you want everybody else to be saved too? Yes. I mean, look, there's some really wicked people out there. Some really wicked people that I, you know, that there's some really scary people. I know talking with uh, men that have worked in prisons and they've talked about some of the men. I, I, I know a man who worked on the death row uh, uh, ward and, and he would talk about some of those men and how uh, what, what they had done and, and things they had done and uh, one man that he talked about he just, he just killed somebody because they irritated him and then while he was in prison killed a cellmate because he irritated him that they couldn't go into that cell without having the warden or the assistant warden and two or three guards to go in that room 
wicked. But he got a hold of a Bible. And he tried to witness to him, and then he, had, he left for a while, and when he came back, that, that fellow talked about how reading that Bible, how reading that Bible, how he says, I'm different than I was before. Wicked man, but a man that came to know the Savior. He wasn't getting out of prison, but he was set free spiritually. Amen. And don't we want everyone to know? That's what Jesus wanted. He just wanted everybody to know. He preached. Boy, he was going on vacation and the crowds came and so he stopped and preached. Remember when he was going to take his disciples up at the mountain? And they, the, he never did get to go on that vacation. Never did get to get away. He preached that everywhere he went, the people came. He preached. He'd have to go pray to his father in the middle of the night because he'd be so busy all day working with sinners or working with people. Oh, how we need to get to the place where, where we want all to hear like Jesus wanted. All to hear like this lady. If you're going to grow in the Lord, and if we're going to continue to grow in the Lord, we have to know how to give the gospel, and we need to begin to give the gospel. Amen. So we see here, the Lord Jesus' purpose was to Meet this lady. And when this lady came to know the Lord, she didn't care anymore about her water pots. She didn't care anymore about what was going on in that moment. All she knew is I need to go tell them to come see him. And then you have the disciples. The disciples, um, they're like us. Didn't always understand. You ever not understood what the Lord is doing? I have. You ever, you ever uh, later on look back and went, oh, that's what God was doing. Sure, we've all been there. They went off to get food. You know, like, like I've always said, they went to find the, the Samaritan Whataburger. Uh, but uh, they went to find some food and, and the, the Lord Jesus was left there. And, and when they came back, look what it says. Um. Verse 31, in the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him saying, Master, eat. So they went, they came back with the food and that lady had gone and gotten the people. The, the people were coming out. The men were coming out. The people were coming out to see the Lord. And the disciples, they were concerned about the Lord. Now, I'm not, you know, I'm not criticizing the disciples. I, I probably would have done the same thing in that position. He was tired. He was hungry. Want to make sure that he stays nourished. And so they were, they were pushing him to eat. But he wanted to teach him something. And this is what he says. Look at verse 34. Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. And then he goes into, Say ye not, there are yet four months and then cometh harvest. Be sold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white already to harvest. The disciples were like us. Um, concerned about the physical, concerned about the things of this world. And what the Lord Jesus wanted them to do was open their eyes that there's more than just the daily grind. There's more than just the daily things that we do. One of Satan's tools that he has used against Christians and churches in this day and age is getting people so busy in their daily lives, they don't have time. We live in a world that will fill up every space, every minute of your time if you let it. Activities, programs, uh, technology, entertainment, uh, festivals, work, play. Every minute that this world loves to fill your life up with the physical and the things of this world. And we all have to live here, right? We do have to work. We do have to eat. We do have to do things. I'm not saying that it's all bad. But I do know that this world loves to keep us really, really, really busy. 
It is amazing to me how long kids, now I, I'm not talking about during the pandemic, I'm talking about when, when things are normal, whatever normal is, you know? But uh, when, when, when it's a regular time and we're not in the middle of all this, it's amazing to me how, how they'll, they'll take your kids before the light comes out in the morning and they'll be at school till after the, until the sun goes down at night. I mean, it, it just keep them occupied, 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 occupied. When I was a youth pastor, at the beginning of being a youth pastor, it wasn't as bad, but as time went by, it just seemed like the school system kept the kids more and more and more. And I'm trying to work with them. I'm trying to have youth services. I'm trying to have youth activities. And the world is just, the, the, the school especially just kept them longer and longer and more and more and offered them more and more activities and more and more things. And, and uh, when I was a teacher, I taught first grade at a charter school back in the early 2000s. It was the first time I'd ever heard of a 24-hour daycare. A daycare that was open 24 hours a day. And I had students that would be picked up and there were days when they would basically never go home. Get picked up and dropped off. And I went, wow. Wow, we've gotten so busy with our life, gotten so involved with the things of this world and it's crept into the church and it creeps into our personal lives to the point where we have so many things going on and not all of them are bad things. I'm not, against, I'm not against kids being in, in, in activities. But I am against it when it just completely consumes their life. I'm not against you having interests and hobbies and things and, and programs. I'm not against all that. But Christians, we've allowed the things of this life to consume us. To the place where... It's not that we don't want to all the time. It's sometimes we're just so busy, we just can't fit it in our schedule. But what is more important than the souls of men? What is it in this world that is more important than the souls of men? Everyone here that's saved, somebody talked to you about it, right? whether it was in a message, in a church, whether it was somebody witnessing to you, whether it was somebody knocking on your door, whether, however, was, somebody took time, right? Aren't you glad? Amen. Would you have wanted that person to put another activity more important than talking to you about the Lord? Would you have wanted them to say, well, I'd love to talk to you about the Lord, but I got, I got food to eat. I got other stuff I got to do. I'm sorry. I think we've allowed ourselves to become distracted and get our focus on so much that goes on in this world. And we're forgetting the most important thing to the Lord Jesus Christ is people coming to him. That's what's most important to us. He says, I got meat that you don't even understand. And we know the meat that he was talking about because the next verse he talks about the harvest. The meat of the Lord Jesus Christ was doing the Father's will and bringing people to him. The harvest of souls was more important to him than placing something in his body. Doesn't mean that he never ate. Of course he ate. That doesn't mean that you can't eat. That's not, what it's, that's not the point. The point was that at that moment, it was more important for him to talk to the people that were running out from that town than for him to sit down and eat whatever they had brought him. Right. And that should be the attitude of the Christian. Look, you're going to have to go to work. I understand that. I'm not preaching against work. I'm not preaching against eating. I'm not preaching against eating. You know? I'm not preaching against these things. I'm not preaching against the daily things that you have to do. What I'm telling you today is that we've got to get our focus back as Christians on what God wants us to do and our priority in a, such a way that we make time to talk to others about the Lord. Amen. 
And what it requires is sacrifice. The Lord Jesus, when he sat down, he was tired, right? You know what's interesting about this? He asked the lady to give him a drink, right? I don't see that she ever gave him a drink. She left the water pot, she left everything. She had that big conversation. It doesn't see anywhere where, maybe she did, maybe somewhere in there she gave him a drink, but she sure wasn't worried about him getting a drink when she got saved. He's tired, he's weary, he's probably still thirsty, he's hungry, but there was something else that mattered more at that moment. That was talking to somebody about himself. That lady went out there in the heat of the sun because she couldn't go at any other time because when they would go in the cool of the day, she wasn't wanted because of her past. She went out in the heat of the day to get water. But when she got saved, all of a sudden filling those water pots at that moment was not important. Right. What was important at that moment was going back to the town and telling everybody, come see the man. Right. Come see the one. Folks, listen. Time's short. And we as Christians have gotten so busy with the things of life. Churches have become full of activities. And I'm not against activities. You know that I'm not against activities. But so full of stuff that doesn't have any real spiritual value or real eternal value. We've become so full of that. That we've lost sight. Jesus Christ saved us. And everyone we know ought to have the same opportunity. As you grow in the Lord, one of the first things that you should learn how to do as a Christian is to tell others about Christ. And it doesn't have to be fancy. And it doesn't have to be perfect. This lady had one message. Come see the one who told me everything. I never done. You can tell somebody that. You need to come meet the one who showed me what a sinner I was and changed me. Then as time goes by, you'll learn the verses. You'll learn how to give the gospel. But you know what's sad? A lot of us in here know how to give the gospel. We just don't. That's right. I'm guilty. I get busy with the things of life. I get busy. I go in the store. And you know what? I, I got one purpose when I go into a store. To get out of there as soon as possible. That's my purpose. Go in. Get it done. I'm on us. I'm out of there. But sometimes in all of that, you miss the opportunity. I got one purpose when I go to a gas station. Pay outside. And get my gas as quickly as possible and leave. Sometimes you miss an opportunity. I got one purpose when I go to a restaurant. Eat as much as I can and then get out of there. Amen? <laughs> but really, I mean, we're, we're all guilty of it. We're all guilty of allowing the little things of life. But maybe we need to get back to the place where our salvation is special to us again. And our salvation so consumes us that we just want to tell somebody else. I need to be reminded of that. We all need to be reminded of that. As, you're gonna, as you grow in the Lord, if you're going to be a true follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, a true disciple, a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ has to be someone that tells us about others about Christ. No secret disciples. No hidden disciples. Telling others about Jesus Christ. Why don't we determine, with God's help, to put our focus back on the meat that Jesus had. And that was doing the will of the Father and bringing people to Christ. Heavenly Father, help us. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help me. Lord, I know I'm deficient in this area. 
I know I'm not the witness I'm supposed to be. I know I miss opportunities. I get busy and I get focused on what I'm doing and focused on my life and forget that there's those that are around me that need Christ. But Lord, help us to, help us to remember what you brought us out of. And then share that good news with those around us that need to hear it. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I wonder, can you honestly say that you're witnessing the way you're supposed to witness? Can you honestly say that you're telling others about Christ the way you should tell others about Christ? I'm not going to have you raise your hand this morning or anything like that. I'm not going to do that. I want you to think about it. Are you being a witness? Are you taking the message that you've received of Jesus Christ and taking it to others? Are you sharing with your neighbors, your friends, your co-workers, the people you come in contact with? Are you being the witness you're supposed to be? If not, why don't you just ask God to make your salvation fresh and new and exciting? where you want to share it with everybody you come in contact with. Let's all stand together as the piano begins to play, but the tray begins to sing. The Lord spoke to your heart in the message. We have an altar here, folks. We have an altar right here. So little time the Why don't you come and say, God, help me to be the witness I'm supposed to be. The witness I'm supposed done. to be. We reapers taken home. Tonight at 5 p.m., 5 p.m., we are meeting with all children's, bus workers, everyone. We had our first meeting last week and then set up the time to do it in, before church instead of after church. Anyone involved with the children's ministry as we start gearing our hearts towards getting there, where we need to be. We need to get together. We're going to be talking about... Uh, um, goals, plans, the safety measures that we need to take, uh, all the different things we need to do so that when the time is right, uh, we're ready to go. We're ready to go. So we're meeting at five tonight, six o'clock evening service, 5 p.m. For the, for the meeting, 6 p.m. for the evening service, um, 7.30 p.m. You can buy me supper. Uh, and then, uh, uh, no, okay. Brother Stephen, it sure was good to have you today. Amen. Amen. Brother Stephen Villarreal and your wife's name is? Anali. Anali. And then he has uh, two children, one here, one in the back. Amen. And uh, he was saying amen back there. I heard him a couple times, brother. Amen. It's no problem. I like it. <laughs> but um, good to have you, missionary in Mexico. We support his father and the family. And uh, good to have you with us, brother. We'll talk more as, you know. Don't get away before I talk with you, brother. Amen. And uh, good to have you with us. I just wanted to come and be a part of the services. Amen. And um, be ready for missions conference. Be here for the meeting tonight. All that good stuff. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your love, grace, and strength. Pray that you would help us now. Bring us back safely tonight. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Amen.